Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So we had the opening of China after a four day long weekend over in that part of the world. And it's obviously Labor Day weekend in the US as well. Um, even though China has drifted a little bit lower, there has been some uh, updates from the uh, local government there about uh, extra support they're going to be providing to prop up the stock market, etc., etc. So most global equity markets are actually up a little bit higher this morning. As you can see, after the volatility of the last couple of weeks, uh, we're still far away from the uh, from the negative move that we had there on Friday. Um, we're probably looking at the tip around about here, around about 16.541 of, uh, of this kind of graveyard doji formation. Usually that precedes a little bit of extra downwards pressure, but uh, we're just waiting for the FOMC now later on this month to get a bit of an idea you know, if the US is going to raise rates or not. Uh, Non-farm payrolls obviously came out on Friday, um, 171, just slightly less than, um, than expected. Uh, but obviously, people now are like not so sure about are they going to raise rates? Are they not going to raise rates? Especially after the extreme volatility they've had in China. But hopefully, we begin to see a little bit more stabilisation right there. So, even though we have seen a move up here in the U.S. markets, I can see that the Germany 30 and the U.K. 100 have only just recently started to tick up late on in the Chinese session. So the Chinese session is almost coming to an end, if not already. Um, so we've still got a, a full day of action ahead of us. So that's currently where we're sitting with the U.S. 30. Moving on to the UK 100, um, you can see if uh, 2073 is in fact still a potential support slash resistance level. And it certainly looks like uh, it had been up and uh, we had this break break through up there on Friday, but we've had a bounce this morning, actually opening pretty much bang on um, 60, 73, 75. And uh, we're at the top end of the range, almost a bullish cross on the uh, on the uh, MACD. And uh, the other technicals are still relatively neutral. Uh, we're miles away from where the moving averages are right now, but it could be that 2073, uh, 60, 73, sorry, could be a potential base. So moving on to Japan, 225, again, bouncing off 17, uh, 496, so potential support there. Uh, and this has been a support level that's been in play for quite some time, but it certainly looks like if you look at it yesterday and again today, it could be a tweezer bottom right here with uh, 18,306 being the next potential resistance. Um, but we're already away from the session lows, um, but then China is off the lows for the day as well. So we'll see how that goes. Looking at dollar yen, in fact, um, a couple of weeks back, dollar yen was just at 124. Now we're below. Now we're at 119. So that yen strength, people buying safe haven yen, people unwinding U.S. dollar possessions because of question marks over uh, their next interest rate hike. That will be adding a lot of pressure to Japan 25, and that's a very steep drop that we've had there. Uh, that probably be oh, 20,000. Uh, yeah, almost uh, almost 10 percent drop right there. So moving on then to dollar yen. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. You can see exactly where that extreme volatility has come. So that was like um, two weeks last Monday. We had a move right back up to 121. It's been pushed right back down again. It certainly looks like we could be starting to play in between these two ranges of 119 to, let's just say, 121 spot 90. And then we'll see how that pans out. Other technicals are relatively neutral. Um, looking at this from a purely technical perspective, obviously it looks like there is pressure here. From a, t from a TA perspective, but um, the fundamental factors uh, are very much going to help drive this. Is the US going to raise rates in September or not? Uh, and then, you know, we can obviously highlight these potential support and resistance levels, but uh, it depends how the US macro data comes out now as well. But that's currently where we sit. Could be range bound with an onus on the downside if uh, the US macro data fails to, uh, to stimulate the rest of the market. So moving quickly on to West Texas crude, um, we had gone down all the way down to 37.50, jumped. A huge, this is one of the biggest uh, weekly gains in, in crude for a long time. It was about a 16% gain in one week, uh, all the way up to about 50, and then it started to come off again there a little bit. So we're miles away from the session lows. Um, matter of fact, crude oil looks a little bit healthier than some of the equity markets, to be honest. Um, but now at $45, there's a lot further that can still go now that there's a new floor in there. In fact, we actually have to start getting rid of some of these other support levels. But certainly, fifty dollars uh, undoubtedly looks to be a psychological round number anyway. Um, but I, I'm I'm pretty confident that looking at these kind of candle formations right here, there is pressure. You're making a series of lower highs right here, and we're below. We're on the wrong side of this potential uh, support slash resistance at forty five eighty five. Uh, if crew doesn't get his head above there, uh, forty two dollars would be the next potential support to look out for. So looking at gold, um, you would think with all the interest rate conundrums going up there that gold would be a lot higher. You can see it spiked up there all the way up until Monday the 24th. Um, and ever since the, the top peak of that Chinese sell-off, actually gold's kind of a little bit reversed, which is kind of strange when you think about the fundamentals uh, that, are, that are out there. But nevertheless, it's on the wrong side of 11.37 right now. 
we've almost got a death cross on the oh my I almost got a bullish cross the short term moving average is about to cross a longer term moving average from the bottom so that actually be a golden cross um, but this this these candlestick formations here look a bit ugly to be completely honest I'm not quite sure how much bullish momentum we're gonna get right here looking at that but um, we will have to start to redraw some of this actually let me just get my drawing tool out. Uh, you could probably you could probably look at that. Might as well start getting rid of some of these um, some of these levels now as well because they're probably no longer valid. We'll probably keep it like that for now. So we're on the wrong side of 11.26. Um, these kind of rebounds here are quite close to the uh, 21 period SMA seem to be good. Currently we're on the wrong side of that SMA as well. So uh, 11.26 uh, could be a short term potential support slash resistance from the wrong side of that right now uh, with uh, any further downwards pressure pushing us a little bit further down. Uh, towards 10.79. In fact, let me just get another horizontal, uh, horizontal level on there, and that's currently where we sit with gold. So finishing up with your dollar and GBP USD. So your dollar obviously been all over the place. Uh, this is the this is on, uh, on on that Monday when we had the massive sell-off in the global equity market, and ever since then your dollar's pretty much reversed complete course. So the dollar's actually t been been gaining momentum against the euro, um, which is obviously quite interesting considering where the uh, where the US dollar is kind of sitting right now, uh, versus say like the Japanese yen. But nevertheless, one spot eleven. We've talked about this level a number of times. It looks to be the potential support again, uh, flattening out the fifty-five period SMA as well. Just slowly getting thinner and thinner. Other technicals relatively neutral. One spot eleven looks to be a pretty critical level for euro dollar. Uh, so keep your eye on that. So looking at cable as well, cables have been getting decimated. Um, uh, we're all, all the way back down at one spot, 51.85. Very strong reversal from uh, for, from that Monday. When we're at one spot, 85. It was down almost seven seven cents, um, and just the last two weeks, pretty decent size move. But um, looking at this right here, we do look like we're having a bit of a short-term bounce of one spot, 51.85. Nothing too too strenuous or that powerful, but that's currently where we are sitting. Uh, economic data wise not a huge amount out today you do have German industrial production at, um, at, at 7 and uh, if we do then I might have that's already come out uh, that came out uh, slightly worse than expected it was expected that forecast at 1 came in at 0 0.7 so that's not so good for the euro and if we fast forward on to Tuesday it looks to be we've got uh, Chinese trade balance data people will be looking at that as at 3 in the morning UK time and we'll be finishing up uh, our, our macro data with a 10 a.m. Uh, GDP figure for the eurozone and then if we then look on Wednesday, not a huge amount on Wednesday, Thursday, uh, more Chinese data, CPI data. Again, that'll be quite keenly watched. And we've got the Bank of England NPC minutes and uh, interest rate announcement, which that's pretty much expected to stay the same. And then you can finish up Wednesday there with your employment data from the US at 1.30. And then obviously the crude oil inventory days, it's crude oil Wednesday that day. So make sure you don't get a chance to miss that. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.